Let's get into our Take Note conversation of the day. We are going to be discussing the plight of persons living with disabilities. Persons with disabilities generally have more health care needs than others, both standard needs and linked to impairment. And they are therefore more vulnerable to the impact of low quality access or inaccessible health care services than others. And this has been made worse by the COVID-19 lockdowns that were put in place as measures to cap the spread of COVID-19. Well, to speak to us about this and more, we have Edson Ingirabakunzi, the CEO of the National Union of Disabled Persons of Uganda. And he joins me right now in studio with Maureen Nambalirwa on sign language right there. A very good morning, Mr. Edson. Yes, good morning, my friend. Tell us, and we would like to understand, how pe persons living with disabilities are coping during the, uh, with the lockdown. Because I do understand, even before COVID-19 came into uh, play, persons living with disabilities were having a hard time moving from point A to point B. I mean, you would really see that someone would find a hard time to get to a taxi. Yes, or to get to the main road to get some kind of trans uh, public transportation. But now we are not talking about taxis. We are not talking about border borders. How are you accessing mm. healthcare mm. facilities to get the help that you need? Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Mm. Uh, I think it's important for our viewers to understand, first of all, the subject matter we are talking about. We are talking about personal disabilities in Uganda, who are now 12.4% of the population. So it's a big number of population that uh, any development intervention should not risk ignoring or forgetting. So there are several issues now during the COVID response. We know it is an emergency situation, but of course also we are aware that in the preparation, the design of the COVID response should not leave personal disabilities behind. Mm. So you mentioned a very important subject here, especially access to health mm. and also the, 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 the situation whereby some of the safeguards such as public transport being stopped mm. and the consequences to have to personal disabilities. Yes, of course, our people have been affected mm. in several ways. And, uh, and of course, you can see that some of our people are perennially on treatment. Mm. We have children with spinal bifida and hydrocephalus who are supposed to be taking treatment every other time. And therefore, the parents are finding mm. it very difficult to take such children to health centers. Mm. But even before this, we had a problem where the public transport was not accessible mm. in any nature. Mm. And therefore, people will also have those challenges. Mm. So we have incidences, of course, now as we talk under this COVID. Of course, we are saying as personal disabilities, we are also the soldiers on the front line mm. to begin with. Therefore, we must abide by the directives and the guidelines. Mm. But these guidelines and directives should mm. be disability inclusive mm. or sensitive mm. to be able to have common sense that actually mm. if a pregnant mother with a disability is on the border, border with the hospital, mm. he should not be stopped. Mm. Because that's enough sticker, mm. it's enough evidence. Mm. So we have had a challenge that some of the implementers of these guidelines mm. have not been sensitive mm. to disability concerns. And that's why we are talking right now. Mm. That one, the, the, the stopping of public transport has had, where it has good intention, it should also have looked into the issues that affect personal disabilities. Mm. That they are not able to walk long distance to go to market, for example. Mm. They are not able to walk to the health center mm. as they used to be mm. because they would jump on the border and then they run to the, hos to the hospital. Mm. We have incidents where even those few personal disabilities have their own private cars mm. are not allowed to move. And that's why we are saying mm. these guidelines and the standards should have been more inclusive Mm -hmm. look at the specific needs of persons with disabilities, mm -hmm. and therefore given the affirmative action for them to go to hospital. Mm -hmm. They are not going for luxury. Mm -hmm. They are going to hospital mm -hmm. to pick treatment, to take their own relatives, to, I mean their own children to the hospital. And this mm -hmm. vehicle of a person with disability mm -hmm. is his or her legs. Mm -hmm. So that was not looked at. And that's why some of us were saying, as the leaders of the disability, mm. uh, disability movement, are saying, mm. it also demands common sense as mm. a person. If I was the one on the road broke, mm. I would not uh, stop a vehicle carrying a person with disability to go to pick treatment in a hospital, for mm. example. But that sensitivity is what we are lacking. Mm. Even when persons with disabilities get to the health centers, they will still grapple with some challenges when it comes to communication, mm -hmm. oral communication. Mm -hmm can actually uh, pro uh, prove to be a disability uh, to, uh, or create a, an environment that causes a disability on its own. Yeah. I'm talking about a deaf person uh, trying to access a health facility, talking to a health worker. Mm -hmm. Now, this health worker is going to respond orally, but then the deaf person is not going to hear anything this health, pers uh, health personnel is trying to uh, communicate to the deaf person. Tell us how this has been made worse during and, the lockdown. And, and, and by the way, you, you raised a very fundamental point. Mm. We've had instances where our people have been battered bitterly. Mm. 
patriot because they are not able to communicate mm. to the people enforcing the, the directives. Mm. Mm. We have a case in Iguru where a young man, Winston Lawyer, yeah, yeah, we, we, are going, we are going to get to that. Let's first and focus that, that on, on the health centers. Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell mm. you. That you find that we are you go to the hospital, mm. the same scenario occurs mm. that the health worker is not able to understand mm. what you're saying. Mm. And the same consequence that the, the young man faced. Mm. So if you are going to determine to take diagnosis mm. of this person has come to you. Mm. Remember, he's supposed to come with a sign language interpreter or the facility should have mm. that interpreter, mm. which is not there. Just like the one so we have on our exactly, set right now. Yeah. So mm. you don't get that kind of information from him or from mm. her and the history. Mm. So that's why I'm saying that as persons with disabilities, this COVID response mm. should have from the very foundation mm. involved the person with disabilities and their leaders mm. to be able to provide the necessary expert opinion mm. Mm. on the matters that affect them. Mm. When you look at Australia, they have a management and operational plan mm. of how to deal with the disability in the health sector. Mm. You know? So there was that level of consciousness that really this pandemic will, fact, will affect the most vulnerable people mm. who will always be at risk in any situations. Mm. And this will be personal disabilities generally and all the people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let's talk about the attitudinal problems at the health center, the attitude. Mm -hmm. of the healthcare practitioners. Care International authored a report that indicates that when some persons with disabilities access health centers to get some uh, sexual reproductive and health or even maternal health services, they're actually told that they do not need them because they have an impairment or they are disabled. Mm -hmm. So there's this attitude that people living with disabilities mm -hmm. don't need sex or don't need uh, sexual and reproductive maternal health services mm -hmm. or even any advice on that subject. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that and how has it been made worse during the lockdown? I think, I think as we talk right now, we have a community that has been socialized mm -hmm. to understand that persons with disabilities don't have value, mm -hmm. therefore don't have dignity mm -hmm. and respect. Mm -hmm. And that's why in, your co in our communities we call them all sorts of names that are quite derogatory. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation, mm -hmm. the social of things. Mm -hmm. And that means that when you are socialized that this person has no value, mm. then even the intervention will come with, they will not see through to see this person. Mm. He becomes invisible. Mm. And that's what is happening right now. Mm. The invisibility of a person with disabilities in the COVID response mm. is creating us more problems. And I've been mm. telling people, if mm. you have a population of 6 million and you, we inter your intervention do not affect them positively or attach them or you know, improve on their situation, mm. it means you are risking a situation whereby COVID will be prolonged to a future date. Why? Mm. Because you have a person who is your guide. Mm. You live in the community. There's no tribe for personal disabilities, mm. incidentally. Mm. We live in the communities. So if the interventions don't find us and work on our situation, mm. you will certainly have to infect the others along the way. Mm. So if you are 6 million, if one person infected one person, among mm. the 6 million, you have 12 million. Mm. So look at that multiplier effect mm. of not at, of not attaching value to a person with disability and ensuring that the response mm. and the interventions mm. feed and filter through to ensure that I get the service mm. that I need mm. during the COVID response. So that is the effect that you're going to have. Mm. You risk failing to defeat this war if you don't include person with disabilities mm. interventions. Mm. If I go to a health center and I come back without being attended to, mm. because I've not listened to me, mm. you are not able to communicate to me, mm. somehow if you change it around, it is now you who is disabled because mm. you cannot understand what I'm speaking. Mm. You see that? So the environment plays a role? Yes, it mm. has a very big fundamental factor mm. in affecting the situation of person with disabilities. Because mm. it is the environment that is disabling us, it is not us. You are only blaming the victim. Mm. Yeah. Let, let's talk about the susceptibility of yeah. persons living with disability mm -hmm. to contracting the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. The Care International, they did author that same report and it indicated that people living with disabilities are actually at more risk of contracting COVID-19 because of the underlying health illnesses that they may be grappling with. One case in point, they also contend that it's very hard for them mm -hmm. to social distance in that regard because you're talking about a blind person who needs a plus one to help them walk around mm -hmm. to get to a health center. So that's another problem it's hard for them to social distance. There's also another issue of uh, people who are grappling with psychosocial problems, like uh, the, uh, the young man you talked about from, West, from the West Nile region who was beaten by uh, the LDUs in the wee hours of curfew. So tell us how this problem has been magnified during mm. COVID-19. You know, what, what COVID-19 has done, incidentally, is to, to, to somehow stifle what has been happening in the communities and some extent escalate it. But you see, mm. we was, we're also saying that we want a COVID-free society mm. where persons with disabilities are living with dignity and respect mm. in the communities. Mm. And in order that one to happen, we had wanted and we still want to engage to ensure that 
there should have been a standard operating procedure mm. on persons with disabilities mm. in emergency situations, and this is the international acceptable standard and practice mm. because they always be at risk. So, in all these circumstances, the standards would have earmarked what must be done in health sector, mm. in education, in employment, in access to food, in all these areas. That now, such that now we are not having a piecemeal mm. of strategies around persons with disabilities in the communities. Mm. So this has not, that's what has not been done. Mm. And therefore, persons with disabilities are disproportionately affected in the COVID response mm. because of the nature of the directives, I mean of the interventions that are coming up that are not seen or that leave out persons with disabilities in such interventions. Mm. And I can give an example, for example, and you raise it, you raise it very mm. importantly here. If they say there's no public transport, mm. remember persons with disabilities need to go to the market to buy food. Mm. They use the border border. Border border should not move. Mm. They use their own, sometimes their private cars, those who are able to mm. have them, to go to buy food. Mm. They can't move. So how do you expect this person crawling down mm. to go to the market to go to the next health center five kilometers away mm. to get the treatment. Mm. That's why now the standard operating procedures would have been very useful to enable people who are implementing the policy to understand, well, there's this situation, this is how we expect to treat our colleagues with disabilities in this environment. And people starving in this regard. If yes, they, they are. If they can't access food. Yes, they are. Jeez. We have instances where people with disabilities are not getting food. Mm. We have instances in the Chileka, even where the poor are distributing the food, in the Chileka say, no, 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 wait, you have your own food at the Prime Minister's office. That's not the case. Mm. That is a deception. There's no specific food that they are going to give. Any food that you give to the community, the community has personal disabilities. Personal disabilities should be able to benefit. In any case, they should be the first one to benefit. Mm. And we have own structures that the, the food committees or the distributing food, people distributing food would have worked with our colleagues mm -hmm. who are at those divisions and the village levels to support mm. the process. Mm. So what we are saying is that actually we are here as allies in fighting the war. Mm. We are only raising red flags mm. that we must bridge mm. to ensure that this COVID is arrested. Mm -hmm. Of course, let's talk about access to information and <coughs> communication purposes. We also mm -hmm. understand that uh, most of the COVID-19 information that has been going about has been on the internet, mm -hmm. has been on radios, has been on television. So a blind person won't be able to hear or uh, to see what is being said or a deaf person won't be able to hear mm -hmm. what is being said on the radio. Mm -hmm. So people, even girls and uh, women in rural areas, can't access this information because of their mobility issues. It's the men who are moving from point A to point B, so they will get to hear some information through Boda Boda Talk. Okay, this is COVID-19, this is what I'm supposed to do. But then the girls uh, in the rural areas and the women, that causes a disability. Am I right? And how has this compounded the issue of poor accessibility <coughs> to information and communication? And I, I think, again, <coughs> related to what we've said, yeah. is that there are specific disability barriers that mm. you always want to provide opinions on, mm. and even expert opinion mm. on, on these, some of these matters. Mm. And that's what I've been saying. The structures that are implementing COVID response mm. should have the courtesy to ensure that persons with disabilities are involved. Mm. And we are talking of full and effective participation of our people mm. because then we know the issues and the needs. Mm. So the communication gap has, and even sharing of information, has been one of, it's one of the areas that has suffered more. Because in even the information that have been coming out in some instances mm. is not providing reasonable accommodation. Mm. Accommodation in such a way that you are providing sunlight with temperature the way this lady mm. is here, but also the information that it can be in a larger print on some of the TVs. Mm. But some of the TVs also, I can say the media, mm. in some of the TVs where we are taking out this information, mm. they don't have interpreters. Mm. There are really very few. So people who would want to understand, get information about COVID, mm -hmm. are not getting it in that strict sense of the word. Mm -hmm. And that one has a serious consequence in terms of how we protect ourselves. So the prevention measures among persons with disabilities are being stifled partly because they don't access information. Mm -hmm. And the same case I was giving you, it was because you didn't understand what people are saying. Mm. The only thing that is very stubborn. Mm. But actually, he's not stubborn. Mm. But he's not understanding what you're saying. Mm. You are speaking a different language, you're speaking mm. a different language. Mm. That's so why they ended us. up uh, in problems yes. with the security. Exactly. Mm. That's what it means. Mm. And that's what we, we end up into that situation. Mm. So when you come to the rural communities, and that's why you're saying, the rural dynamics, mm. even the, the relevant committees at district level, mm. this is the information you should be able to have mm. if we are represented. Mm. If you are going to the community X, you are using a loud speaker to speak, be cognizant of people who will not be able to listen to you. Mm. And therefore, they will be supported, our community, our colleagues 
who exist in such a communities. Mm. And incidentally, as in Odipo, by the way, mm. we are well represented from national to the village level. Mm. These are our members. So it's very easy to organize personal disability in this country mm. because they have their own formal structures which we can penetrate through to fight this, mm. this pandemic. Mm. Yeah. Let's also talk about the issue of old age. Uh, we are mm -hmm. talking about 12.4% of people living with disabilities yes. making up a population of people aged 2 to mm -hmm. and above, two yes. ages of 2 and, and above. Yeah. And we are also talking about 36% of, uh, of our population in Uganda being mm -hmm. about the age of 60. Mm -hmm. Now, according to the Care International Report, they mm -hmm. say that people above the age of 60 mm -hmm. are more prone to actually developing some form of disabilities yeah. and in turn are more prone to contracting COVID-19. How has it been made worse during mm. the uh, COVID-19 lockdown and so forth? You know, in, we are living in the extraordinary situations mm. that require extraordinary solutions. And, and, and for us, we are solution focused. So when you look at the population of people who are old aged, mm. who are aged in mm. our communities, mm. definitely they don't have some w gaps in terms of accessing the necessary services in, mm. in the COVID response. Mm. But of course, re relating to the disability, the more you grow old, some of them, depending on who the nature of your health. If some people are diabetic, mm. uh, sometimes it becomes susceptible to, to stroke, others lose their sight. So there is a, 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 a direct, a, a direct um, correlation between old age and disability to some extent because once you become old and diabetic and you, you lose sight, then you also become disabled. Mm. But the situation we are talking about now is that we are living in a situation which is an emergent situation we have not had it in, a, in the recent past, and therefore people are trying to grab around with how they come up with solutions, especially around the old age people. Mm. And, they, and I think it's important that then, once such epidemics occur, again, there are formal structures that we have to engage as a country. We have all the, st all the structure, I mean, structures for elderly people in this country that we could have engaged to ensure that these people, they have the necessary safety nets to ensure that they are not affected fundamentally. And I'm, I'm told this disease actually affects more of older people than mm, younger people. Yes. Because then they are very weak, their immune is very weak and so on. Mm. So these are some of the issues that as a, as a country we would have to look into. Our people, personal disabilities mm. also, grow old. You can grow old when you have a personal disability. So the situation is even made worse. So like for example, now I'm moving around giving wheelchairs to those extremely old people who have mm. personal disabilities in the communities. Mm. And we've been engaging with government asking them, please, no deep requires to have stickers to enable them to move to the next point where our people who need the services can be supported. Mm. So it has been a bit of a challenge also in this area. Mm. So the elderly people who are also persons with disabilities need a lot of support. Mm. How does gender mm. and disability mm. intersect? Mm. Help mm. us understand that. Mm. I think, you see, gender is not necessarily about men and the women, mm. but there are roles, uh, the ascribed roles and responsibilities mm. that, this, that, you know, we, we must be able to perform. Mm. So gender is not, not so far away from, you know, mm. uh, disability issues. Mm. Because when you're talking about gender, then you're also talking about personal disabilities. Mm. These are this really more or less related in terms of concepts. Mm. But the roles that, for example, women would do, mm. and the roles that women with disabilities would do, mm. and the roles that men would do, mm. somehow these are intertwined. Because as the society grows, there are new roles and responsibilities people are picking up. So when you look at that factor, you find that men mm. Mm. and women with disabilities mm. actually have been playing more or less similar roles, or mm. bringing food on the table, mm. uh, some of them have been in the gardens. But of course you see, now the factor that is changing is that there are very few cases now where men who have been, women who have been you know, having mm. businesses in town trying to support our people's disabilities, mm. who either they are their husbands or that they are, you know, whether they are their, mm. their wives, the whole uh, fabric has changed. And we mm. need to st they start discussing mm. how are people now going to start surviving mm. to get food on the table when they have been working from hand to mouth mm. and they are the homes. Mm. And at the same time, some of the ladies who have been getting food on the table doing mm. their uh, art crafts and, and so on mm. are not able to do so and get this necessary market. There was a scary uh, line in the Care International report that seemed to indicate that some mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. are actually prioritizing children that do not have any disability mm -hmm. over those that have disabilities mm -hmm. in terms of accessing food and other essentials. A family would focus on the children who are, you know, not having any disability.
for food, water, mm -hmm. uh, and other essentials. What do you make of that? You know, it's in your experience, is it yeah. true? Our it's, it's it's common actually. Even when we're going to school, really? Yeah, there are some families because you see, I told you, this this some of the communities we are living in, it has been difficult for a person with disability to come on the floor. Mm -hmm. They have been leaving them in the garages, mm. yet they are not cars. They have been leaving them, you know, tied to trees, tied to trees and so on, teasered like goats. But you see, what that means is that the socialization, we've been brought up to understand the person with disability do not have whatever, as I told you from the mm. very beginning. So even when it comes to the basic services, they will give to those they assume to have value, mm -hmm. which is contrary to what actually it is, because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. They are disabled people or persons with disabilities in the communities mm -hmm. that have been more useful mm -hmm. and are still useful mm -hmm. comparatively to able-bodied people. Mm -hmm. So they are human beings fundamental to begin with. So okay. disability, the addition is mm -hmm. a human being first Indeed. before it becomes a person with disability. And we have various viewers of different backgrounds that are watching right now and they would like to know what your message is to yeah. them. How, what are some of the coping mm -hmm. mechanisms yeah. they could employ to yeah. get through this period? Yeah. So one of the coping mechanisms has been that we... we We've been engaging with government and the stakeholders to ensure that they are providing food to our communities. Mm. We are actually ourselves moving out to take some of the people who need treatment to the hospitals as a Nudipu. Mm. We have also engaged to ensure that the representation of persons with disabilities is acceptable mm. to the, all the COVID committee's response because that's when they will have the necessary information that we need to have. But also, we, we are also saying that the food distribution should be prioritize people with disabilities, mm. especially those that are not able to hear when you are calling out people, there's food here and so on. CEO of National Union of Disabled Persons, Mr. Edmond, speaking to us about the plight of disabled persons in Uganda. Thank you very much for having made the time to speak to us. Well, you're still watching Morning at NTV at this point in time. We are going to take another short break. We'll be right back with another conversation on how to horticultural workers. Yes, they are meant to be sleeping at the, uh, at the farms. So how are they faring? And also the plight of the private school teachers who is speaking.